All right, here we go. You ready, guys? Brilliant speed with vibrant service. Fibric broadband and I always forget I don't have to turn that microphone on anymore. I've got to go like this. Woohoo! <laughs> two, t- two days in a row I get to see I you. I know. So exciting. Oh, I'm, For you who? think you're excited, man. I've been thinking about it all since yesterday. Wow. Right. Living the dream. Living the back dream. here twice in a row. I don't you know. know. I, don't know. I, I just get to see her every day at work. I mean, you lucky I know. dude. You. I was going to say thanks for the warning. That's yeah. what you. That's that's his type of humor. Uh, well, anyway, here we are again. And I'm, who are you again? So people? this is. Um, so we're the vibrant sales team, and once a week we put on the show to educate you guys on some information <laughs> on internet or just life in general. So mm-hmm. welcome again. I'm Jane. I'm Nathan. I got him turned up. <laughs> there he Ooh, is. There he is. <laughs> All right. So today's We're on the seven topic. second delay, obviously. <laughs> right. So today's topic, dun dun, dun mm-hmm. it is troubleshooting. So Woody, have you had any troubleshooting questions with your wireless internet or vibrant in general? It happened almost day one, but let's say week one. Okay. Week one. Yeah. Enlighten what us. What happened? It wasn't working. There was some problem. Turned out that when the um uh, when they went underground with it, they must have just snipped a little bit of uh, the wire and had a little bit of it exposed. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Fiber optic, it's glass, you know. Well, I guess so. That, I, I found that out yep. right up at the box there. They said, well, that's that's the glass piece or whatever. But um, they were able to get a, I'm going to call it a sniffer. Yeah. Oh, it's right there. They cool technology, it isn't it? I, an electrician it? came out of my house and had to do that, too. It's amazing. So there we yeah. go. That's the only troubleshooting I ever had to do. Yep. So we're that reliable. You've never had an issue with Vibrant. And you want to know what? It was about 11 minutes from the time I called till they were there. Oh, awesome. Wow. Uh, That's so, so good. There you go. All right. So I'm doing a little Cliff Clavin here for you. <laughs> so it's a known fact. So what is troubleshooting, right? So most of us probably know what it is, right? And it's just trying to figure out something and something to fix it. Mm-hmm. So an example would be like your sink is clogged or something like that. Mm-hmm. Well, the term troubleshooting, here's here's my Cliff Clavin moment. <laughs> so the term troubleshooting originated from the word troubleshooter, which was first used around guess what year? Oh, I'm guessing, let's see, they had to have a gun in their hands. So it's going to be about 1742. Well, not that old. Oh, okay. 1898. Oh, yeah, there, there you go. go. There so almost anyways, broke the 1900s. Almost. There you go. Yeah. A troubleshooter who was someone who specialized in identifying and fixing problems, particular in telegraph or telephone lines. Yeah, I read that um, in the early days of the railroad and the telegraph, when they're building the construction and they're building the lines and all that stuff, mm-hmm. yeah, they would hire these freelance people, gunmen, to shoot trouble that comes along. Yeah. There so you go. troubleshooting, troubleshooter. And now that? we still talk about it, but nobody's really pulling out guns to shoot trouble anymore. But well, no. But then again, we don't have the dit, that dit, dit, that dash yeah. dash sort of communication True. either. <laughs> True. <laughs> so anyway, our topic today is troubleshooting. So Bo's going to kick us off with some speed test information. All right. Yeah, something we hear a lot yes. about from people wondering about speeds. There you go. Yeah, this is a question probably I get at least once a day. It's like, you know, how do I run a speed test? How do I know what I have? I, you know, I know I have internet, but I haven't checked my bill in years. So we always recommend running a speed test. And so there's a couple different ways to do it. Usually the easiest way is to just go to Google, type in the word speed test. And then there are a couple different websites you can use. There's one that's like part of Google. It's blue. You can hit run. And that will show you what you're getting for your download, your upload, your, your latency. But... You know, speed tests can be a little different. Sometimes if you're running it from a really old device, that device can't even get to the speed maybe that you have. So the best way to do it is our routers with Vibrant have an app associated with it, and you can run speed tests right from the app. So that way you know 100% what you're getting. And even if you don't have Vibrant, there's probably an app associated with the router. So that's kind of the first recommendation we have. If you can do that, great. Run it from right from that the router and from that app. Uh, you can hardwire it. You can plug your Ethernet cable into your device. Make sure you're hardwired connected. Run it then. And that's going to be another great way of telling you exactly what you're getting. 
But, you know, what most people do, they're like, I don't have it hardwired, I have my iPhone, I have my Samsung phone. So you can also run it from your phone. As long as it's a newer device, that's going to show you pretty accurately what you have and what you're, what you're getting, either with a provider that you're maybe thinking of switching from, or if you're just curious and want to see what speed tests you have. So that's kind of what we recommend to people, and it's a little bit new, and some people think it's a bit overwhelming, but it takes like 30 seconds. Super easy. What I think is, well, people forget this. So when you're using the Internet, that speed test takes away that availability. So ba- no. basically when you run a speed test, it's on- you're only looking at the availability of what you have going on for your internet. So if you're gaming or on your phone or watching right. TV, those that takes away from the speed. So it's it's not like... I don't know. Yeah. Anyway. Well, and you've got a lot of devices that can be used you yeah, know, absolutely. for the internet, obviously, in any given house. Yeah. And it can matter how far you are from the router when you're in a speed test. If you're out in the garage and your router's in the living room, you may not get the full, you may not show the speed you're actually getting to the router because right. you're pretty far away. In fact, I remember thinking, well, I should stand as close. To, I should get my phone basically on top of my router and run a speed test there. But, um, I found out, I think they recommend about 10 to 15 feet away from the router is the prime prime distance to run a speed test oh. if you're going to do it wirelessly. They don't want it, if you get too close, I don't know, there might be some sort of issue, but if you, 10 to 15 feet is the the go range, I guess, for okay. that. So okay. we get a lot of questions on speed tests because unfortunately if people don't have fiber, a lot of times they don't get the speed that they're paying for. Uh, we hear that a lot. Well, I pay for 100, but when I run a speed test, it's ever only ever 40 or 50 and stuff like you that. You wonder where it gets lost. Yeah, a lot of it's the technology. Um, you know, fiber optic can carry that signal the furthest and keep that speed up the fastest. With, you know, DSL, copper, these older technologies, the longer the line, just the, the slower the speed is going to get over time. So mm-hmm. it's just a limitation of the technology a lot of times. But sure. another question we get often... Um, I get this at my house. My wife will be sitting next to me. She'll be on, um, you know, a social media app or she'll be watching Netflix or something. And then all of a sudden something will stop working. And she's all, the Internet went down. I'm like, well, <laughs> let's let's find out if that's true. So what, what I tell people is if you're using Facebook or you're using Netflix or you're using something and all of a sudden that, that service stops working, that app stops working, that website is having issues, first thing you should do is, Try a different app. Try a different website. See if if it's just that program that's having the problem, or if it's the internet. So, if you if Netflix having problems, launch YouTube and see if a YouTube video works. If a YouTube video works, well, then your internet's still working. Mm-hmm. So maybe Netflix is having mm-hmm. the problem. If you launch a separate app and that app is still having problems, still could be your device. It could be the phone has a has an issue, or the computer that you're using has a problem. Oh. So try a different device. Try a TV or a different phone or a computer or whatever. And if both devices are having the same problem, well, then it could be, you know, there's a, there's a, it could be the router you need to reset, something like that. It's relatively basic. That's the first step of troubleshooting usually is to power cycle or reset the power. Sure. Um, so if you have a Wi-Fi router, uh, there's another piece of equipment that you might have, depending on the type of service you have, like a modem type device, or we call it an ONT if you have fiber. Usually you just want to power cycle, you know, unplug them, leave them unplugged for 20, 30 seconds, plug them back in. A lot of times that fixes a lot of issues if it truly is a problem on the Internet side of things. Uh, and if it's beyond that, get us involved. If you have Vibrant, you know, we love helping people fix their issues. If it's something to do with that, the fiber, you know, has unbelievable reliability. So usually it's not, um, you know, an issue with the fiber of the Internet itself. Right. Um, so, but yeah, those are kind of the first steps of troubleshooting, I suppose. And then Wi-Fi range is another thing we hear a lot about when it comes to troubleshooting and stuff. It is. So... I ended up getting a phone call from one of our subscribers, and they were super frustrated. In fact, they wanted to cancel. And I'm like, well, are you guys moving? What's happening? And they're like, no, I just I just can't get internet into my bedroom. Well, so I ended up reaching out to our, our troubleshooting, you know, our NAC department, and basically said, hey, can you look at this? And they're like, yep, there's there's not enough. The, wi- the range is... The, where the router is located isn't further, you know, they need to have better internet in that location because the router mm-hmm. isn't set up to be successful in that room. So we ended up sending some somebody out right away and then we were able to relocate the router and then she was able to have wireless internet throughout her whole home. So that's, you know, that's, router placement is an extremely important piece of 
getting quality internet too. And don't they also have uh, uh, extenders? Yep, that's where I'm going next. Oh, so, uh, you're a mind reader. I, you're I, an, I lead I these. Know, I know. I know. You lead them to water. <laughs> so, so the range. You know, if if you have a very large home, or you have a home that has plaster, or a tin roof, different mm-hmm. things like that, you're going to need additional. Um, a, a router, a Wi-Fi extender. So basically what that is, is it's kind of, um, so if you have A, B, and C, and mm-hmm. your router's at A, and you need to have service at C, you're going to put another router at B. So mm-hmm. that way you're you're getting enough enough internet fr- to B, and then B is going to carry you to C. I hope that makes sense. Does that make sense? And only because it, that's what we had to do at our place. So I'm yep. following it from up yeah. there yep. to down here to the little hockey puck out there at C. Yep. Yep, and, so. and, you know, the other thing is people really want to, if they have a, you know, man cave or mm-hmm. anything like that, they want to have a internet out there, too. So that's really important. So, again, you'd put, you'd put the router closer to that, that outbuilding, and then you'd put in a Wi-Fi, you know, mesh system out there. Right. Or if you want to get fancy, you can put uh, Cat5, you know, put a duct in there and put Cat5 to get from your mm-hmm. home to your uh, outbuilding, and mm-hmm. then you can get, it's a direct connection, and that's really the way to go if you really want to have quality internet out at that shed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, it used to be that we needed internet in one or two places. Like, a lot of times it was in the living room. There was a, a desktop computer on a, on a counter in the living room. That's kind of when we all started getting internet. Now you need the internet pretty much on your entire property. You know, you yeah. people want it in their garage to listen to music or throw a TV in their garage. People want it in the bathroom because they're going to sit on their phone when they're in the bathroom. Yeah. Be- at you know, the lake, they want it out on the yep on the shore, and you yep. want it in your yard if you're gonna throw a speaker out and and you know play in the yard or I mow my lawn and and, and yeah exactly yes. security cameras is huge oh now. yeah good good those good are usually point, outside on uh, the garage or, or doorbell I mean you we used got to, one that uh, is down by the lake exactly so you know it we've used got to be stuff down there exactly <laughs> and getting getting Wi-Fi out there can be a problem that's where the extenders and stuff come yeah. in and stuff like that but we're just needing internet in so many more places than we used to. That's why people didn't need extenders, you know, 10, 15 years ago. And that's why they're more popular now because we we just need more internet in more places and more devices and all that stuff. So, yeah. And Bo, my son, helped me uh, uh, with this uh, Cat5 uh, cable and I said, I thought we were done with cable. He says, this isn't cable. He says, it this is, is just a cable. It is a cable. <laughs> but Bo, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Perfect lead because speaking of cable, a lot of people have switched from cable to streaming. Yep. Mm-hmm. And people, that's another one we get all the time, questions about streaming troubleshooting. Right. And that can range from, I turn my TV on and what's normally there isn't there anymore. I can't get my Roku to pull up. I can't get Netflix or YouTube TV. So a lot of times it sounds almost too simple, but the input on your TV, that can get bumped pretty easily if you sit on the remote or you just accidentally hit it. So. That's kind of the first thing we try. It's like make sure your input, if it needs to be on HDMI 1 and it got bumped to HDMI 2, just make sure you switch it back. A lot of times that's, you know, it sounds simple, but that typically is, um, you know, something that happens pretty often. Yeah. Or, you know, just unplug it and plug it back in. You unplug your, the power to your Amazon Fire Stick or to your Roku or to your Direct TV box. That will fix like almost, I'm, I'm, it takes say probably about 80% of the issues just kind of power cycling the device. And, and those are simple fixes. There are some things that are a little more complicated with streaming, like contract disputes. Like right now, DirecTV is in a dispute with Disney, so DirecTV <laughs> can't get ABC. That's ESPN yeah, we'll for some of us. ESPN, yeah. <laughs> You're missing the yeah. body language so, yeah. over here. He's punching in his hand. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, <Yeah>. anyway. <laughs> and it's, it's super frustrating, especially like, it's going to be the start of football season. People want to watch what they want, like certain channels that you're you may be missing out on your sports or your TV shows that you watch. That is also the benefit of streaming, though, because if DirecTV gets rid of the channels and that dispute lasts for, let's say, you know, six months, you can just switch to something like YouTube TV or Hulu Live, and you're not you don't have to get a separate satellite dish or a cable. As long as you have internet, you can switch that out. So that's what we recommend to people. If it's frustrating, if you want to switch to something else. You know, that's what you can do. We can't control their contract disputes and how long those go. Yeah. But there's ways to get around with it. So if you find if, if your provider, your streaming provider drops what you want, drop them and switch to something else. Very uh, 
yeah. very easy to do nowadays. Yeah, I mean, contract disputes have been around as long as cable and satellite services have, have existed, essentially. I mean, I, I used to have contract disputes, you know, 20 years ago with my Dish Network stuff and lose channels for a certain amount of time. The nice thing, like Bo said, with streaming is you have access to other services that offer the channels that you might be missing. And maybe you get that in the short term until they get in a new agreement and go back. Or um, There's just more options. You know, If this happened with your cable provider and you didn't have the option to stream, you'd be out of luck. There'd be zero options right. until that's resolved. Mm-hmm. Where now you do have some options to go to another provider or make a switch if you wanted or needed to. I so, bought Paramount for a month. Uh, excuse me. When... I, when, yep. when uh, CBS, CBS had yeah. their mm-hmm. issues, and also did the same thing with Peacock Correct. when NBC had their issues. So you're I was right. just I was just going to ask that. So because mm-hmm. Disney owns Channel Five or and and the, ABC, ABC. Other, other, yep. other way around, and or the whatever. Disney mm-hmm. Channel. So yep. can you can you just for like the month join a subscription to Walt well, Disney and I then sure was and then two on those. and then add the ESPN? Well, you could. I mean, I I tried to look. I looked into it quite a bit. Like. You can't really page just watch ESPN by itself, the okay. channel ESPN. No, not um, as an a la carte deal, correct. but right. But there's the there's services, other services the that have it. A yep. month deal. It was monthly, not like a year contract or anything. Correct. So yeah, yep. okay. and then the Disney Plus carries a lot of the Disney shows and movies, so you can get Disney Plus and and if you if you have kids that watch the Disney Channel, that'll placate a lot of the mm-hmm. Disney stuff. Um, but yeah, the ESPN one's a little harder to get. Like I said, there are other providers that carry it, though. So there are right. options that mm-hmm. you wouldn't have had if you couldn't stream, you know. Right. Um, and usually those disputes don't last super long, especially when the NFL season hits, because that's, I think they time it intentionally to put pressure on the, you know, the companies to make a deal, because everybody knows the NFL yeah. is probably the biggest viewership right. of all Well, and they did the it time, through, so. through the big tennis deal, too, the U.S. Open. I think Correct. that was intentional. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So, wow. yep. See, now I have Hulu Live, and then we just did an add-on for Disney and then ESPN. So that that's how we watch oh, those yeah. channels. So Yeah, yep. perfect. There are, alt- there are alternatives. And one quick note, if you have DirecTV and you are um, suffering from losing that, the, that stuff we just talked about, mm-hmm. uh, I don't think it's re- regularly advertised, but if you contact DirecTV and tell them you know, you're frustrated by it, they are offering, I think, a $20 credit um, each month that this is going on. Oh. So, I, like I said, I don't think that's going to be automatic. I do think you have to call to get it. So right. if you have direct TV, maybe give them a call. It could be worth 20 bucks to you. Right. Um, and then one, one, the, what, for troubleshooting then, when we hear people say, well, what do I do if I'm having problems? Who do I go to? What do I do? Well, we mentioned some of the basic steps. You know, reset your equipment. Reset maybe your phone, your Roku, your TV, your computer. Maybe unplug and replug in the router. That kind of basic stuff. And if, if you're still having problems, if you have Vibrant, absolutely give us a call. You know, we're, we're locally based right here in Litchfield. You know, we have techs that are available 24 hours a day if we need, you know, if it's an emergency and we need to get somebody out or we need to send somebody over. Uh, don't struggle through it. I, I, I hear from too many people that say, well, it's been out for a while. I've been having issues for a while. It's been in and out. I just kind of put up with it. That's not what we want to hear. We want to we fix your issues if you're having problems. So absolutely give us a call. Like I said, you can do some of the basic stuff. Um, reset some of your equipment. Make you know test another device. Make sure it's not just you know you're the one device you're using. But if you're still having problems, give us a call. Right. And so, Bo, where are we going to be next Wednesday? The well, next Wednesday, we're going to be at the uh, Paysville Senior Center or the Greenworth Area Center. That's going to be Wednesday, September 11th, and we're putting on a hacker, scammers, and AI class. So. You know, teaching people how to stay safe online, how to you know avoid getting their email, their phone, their devices hacked. So uh, a while back, we did our streaming presentation um, out in Painesville. So now, if you want to come by and you know if you want to bring a friend and just learn a little bit more about online safety, and stop out. That's going to be um, September 11th. That's a Wednesday. Yep. Um, and yeah, and we've done some uh, previous episodes on how to stay safe online. So if you can't make it and want to catch one of those episodes, just uh, you can search Vibrant Broadband on Facebook, on our YouTube channel. You can find those uh, those past episodes, and obviously you can listen live here every Wednesday at 1030 on KLFD. And, and if you have questions, just give us a call. Um, it's our number here is 693-3231, or you can stop onto the website at uh, VibrantBroadband.com. Yep. Thanks for having us, Woody, Absolutely. again. Thanks, KLFD, for hosting the show. I look forward to on it On Wednesdays. Week. Thank you for listening out there. We appreciate hearing from people listening. My name is Nathan. I'm Jane. And I'm Bo. Tune in next Wednesday for another Vibrant U Live.
Vibrant speed with vibrant service. Vibrant broadband internet. Vibrant broadband internet.